My name is Mark Wallenberg, and I'm joined by other members of the Operations Bureau here at DOB, uh, Jody Kaplan, Nancy Schindler, also in the room is Sean Donahue. Uh, we're going to be covering a couple of different things today. We will be going through uh, some recent uh, updates, service updates, and some reminders on our filing. Then we're going to cover some recent local law uh, that have recently uh, affecting our systems and uh, affecting our filings, or will be very shortly. And then we're going to be talking about the upcoming release in DOB now, the upcoming expansion that's going to occur at the uh, end of the year and in January of next year. So the first part I'm going to turn over actually to, uh, to Jody Kaplan and who's our chief customer uh, officer and she's going to go through some recent service notices and other items that we have up on our website a good reminder on uh, various things that you may find useful jody are you there yes here i am <laughs> All right, so um, some of these updates are things that we have added um, to our systems um, with the, with the um, onset of COVID-19 to try to get our customers to be able to do almost everything online. Um, so these recent additions are things that we've done to try to make it so that you don't have to come in person to do anything at the Department of Buildings, at least that's where we're trying to get to. Um, so there are, um, there's a module now in DOP now, and it's called Biz Options. Um, and if you want to show what that looks like, yeah, so um, you're going to log in. So you can see it at the top of the Biz Options screen, and there are four things that you can do in there. Options. So the first one is the biz job L2 request. So if you have um, a job that's an e-filing or in biz and you need to do an L2 request, you need to first have um, a permit that's in process. Mostly, this is what will happen when you have a permanent in process. You add um, the job number and the document number here, and then the L2 form is you're doing the data entry in the system. So it's no more L2 form. You're just doing the data entry into the system and then it is reviewed by a plan examiner and is sent to a plan exam team. Um, there are a few exceptions which are listed there in the screen where you have to do a PR11 um, to be able to request it because you're not going to be able to enter it into the system. But basically biz L2s are mostly done online now. Uh, the second uh, module in here is Certificate of Correction Review Request. So the paper forms have not been entirely eliminated. It's just now you are um, uploading the forms in this module so that they can be reviewed electronically by the Administrative Enforcement Unit. So you're coming in here and you're updating your AAU2, your AAU20, whatever the forms may be. Um, and they are going to be reviewed and submitted online through the system. Uh, the third one is the license renewal applications. Um, so all renewal applications are now done through the system. You need to have an e-filing account first, um, and then once you register for your e-filing account, you can do your license renewal. And then the fourth option is boiler sign off, which is pretty specific, but there are some instances when there was a biz job and there needs to be a request for sign off for that biz job. You can come in here um, and go through the process to request that rather than having to come in person to the boiler unit. Right. Go back to the slides. So um, the other um, pretty big recent addition was now you can pay for and request waivers for violations for elevators and boilers. Uh, this is something that we are hoping to roll out even further, but right now it's only for elevator and boiler failure to file violations. So it's for anything um, like if you didn't do your cat one or your cat five um, and the same thing it's compliance filings that you're, you're gonna be able to look up. So if you wanna go to the public portal 
um, anybody can do this even without logging in. You can search for any vi elevator boiler violations that are on that property. So I think this is pretty cool. Uh, it's a good, a good addition to um, the resources we're providing for everybody. You can go ahead, you can search by address, you can do it by bin, device number, violation number, whatever, we're doing it by address here. And when you do that and you put in the property, it's gonna show you any boiler or elevator uh, violation that exists and how much is due. So it used to be that you would have to submit a penalty sheet to the unit and it was a rather you know, labor intensive research that had to happen to try to figure out um, what penalties were owned were owed on um, different violations. Um, so you come in here and you do the research and then if you log in and you decide that you can pay for it or you can request a waiver. And in order to do that, you have to um, pay for it. Uh, but um, you know, this will allow you to do the research yourself. And if you wanna go back to the slide for a second, uh, there is one other feature that when you log into DOB Now Safety, you could also request a rescission request for a stop work order, but only for those stop work orders that are related to COVID-19 safety guidance. Um, so there's a portal in there where you can upload um, information to get that stop work order lifted. All right, so um, there were a couple of service notices that came out pretty recently that provide updates that were requested by the industry. So it was our, um, our work to try to incorporate things that the industry have told us about these different work types and um, some adjustments were made to try to improve that. And these service notices that are hyperlinked here, so um, we can just show you where service notices live in general, um, but basically, uh, service notice on structural was uh, telling, um, giving some updates to the pair uh, review report when that appears in a filing, um, some updates to the door lock monitoring, um, filings for elevators, and then there's also now a combined AHV permit. So if you're doing a permit and it's one, it's the same licensee doing multiple permits on the same bin, they can go into DOB now and request um, a combined AHV permit. And the only other thing that needs to be there is that one of those permits needs to be a DOB now permit. But if it's a DOB now permit and a biz permit and it's the same G GC and it's the same bin, you can request one combined permit, HV permit um, in DOB now. Right. And that's where you find uh, service notices. You go to the homepage of our website um, and you click on that and it takes you to all of the service updates that we, we uh, post and there's some useful info that, you know, information there. I wanna make sure everybody knows where to find it. All right, so uh, there are three things at the moment, these three things that happen outside of DOB now build um, that were not built into the system yet. Um, and I just wanted to run through how you do those. So if you're doing um, a minor plan change, you have to upload an AI1. If you're doing a supersede or withdrawal request, you need to go to our help form to do that. Um, and if you wanna go overhead to the, to the form. And so at the bottom of the form, this page, DOB Now Help, which is the, the short link there, are the actual forms that you need. So there's the AI1 form, there's the superseding letter, and there's the withdrawal request. So you fill out the form. Um, if this is if you're superseding or withdrawing an owner, an applicant, a contractor, a special inspector, a progress inspector, um, any of those that's, that's done with a superseding or a withdrawal letter in DOB Now. And then you go to the help form and you upload it. Um, so, yeah, you can see where it is. <laughs> pick your um, module, pick your filing type, and um, what you're doing is you're requesting supersede or withdrawal, or you're doing a submit the, the, the one afterwards is the AI one. Um, so there is some processing time that's involved in this supersedes and withdrawal requests. We we do get a lot of them, and they do take. Um, 
resources for us to be able to do that. So right now it's taking up to three weeks or more for those to be processed. Um, but coming December 28th, um, some of this functionality is going to be added to DOB Now Build, which will definitely improve processing time. Um, and just a reminder too that AI One Forms are for minor plan changes only. A lot of the things that maybe in the past had been done with an AI One Form can be done um, as a waiver or a deferral request of a document in DOB Now. So it's on the Actions column. You can go to the Documents tab. Um, and you can request your waiver or deferral as part of the system. It doesn't, it's not an AI one. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, permit expiration is something that sometimes can be a little bit tricky um, in DOB now. We we think it's it's a good things, but it's all, always a good idea to walk through how it works exactly. So there's no anticipation towards the end of when your permit's going to expire. Um, so permits issued in DOB now, there, it's looking at um, three different things. The first is all of the insurances for the GC, are they up to date? That's the general liability, disability, or workers comp. Um, is the license itself expired? Or has it been more than one year since the permit was issued? And if it finds that the insurance or the license has been updated before the expiration date, and it's been less than one year, DOB now will automatically update the permit expiration date to match the next expiring insurance, whatever the date is that's coming next, and you don't have to pay to renew it. So this all has to happen before the permit expires. So you go and you update your insurances, the GC updates their insurances with the licensing unit, or they renew their license all before it expires. Then on the day, the end of the day that it was supposed to expire, the new expiration date will show up. So if your permit was gonna expire on September 30th and you go into the system on September 31st, um, then it will show the new expiration date if you have updated your insurances or your licenses. Uh, this information um, is a good segue into my, my next uh, slide. Um, there's an FAQ up about this. So if you get kind of confused about um, how to, um, how this process works, the permits, we did add an FAQ to it. Um, and I also wanted to remind everyone that the executive order about when licenses and permits expire, um, there's a service notice that was posted that gives new expiration dates, depending on the date of when the permit was supposed to expire before the um, executive order went into effect. So if you have any questions, if it seems like, why is my permit why was it extended? Why isn't it extended? You should also look at that service notice um, to be sure that you understand the, the policy that went into effect. Um, but this is um, a page here to remind you of all the resources that we have available for you for DOB Now. So when you go into our main you know, nyc.gov slash DOB Now, before you even log in, on the bottom right here are links to all of the FAQs and resources. Um, the FAQs are pretty extensive. We are constantly working to update these. Um, I actually just added a new section for boiler equipment and OP49s. Um, so there's a, the answer to how does my permit um, renew is in here as well. So that slide that we just went over is in here as an FAQ. And a lot of the questions that you may have are all listed here uh, because other people have asked them. So we've included them here for the FAQs and try to give you as much information as we can. The resources pages for um, build and for safety are broken down by work type. So each page has its own resources page. Um, and there are presentations that we did when we initially launched. There are step-by-step -step guides where you could, how do I do a TR1? How do I add a work permit? Um, they're broken up by steps. So you don't have to go to the huge user guide. You can go to the step-by-step -step guides. We also have video tutorials. If that's something you prefer, if that's how you prefer to learn, you can go in there and watch a video that will walk you through the steps as well. So all of these resources are here for all of the different work types and for build and safety, lots of FAQs and things for you to, to um, help you along the way.
Um, and just there are, you know, we're not just DOB now build. <laughs> there are other things uh, that we know you have to use in order to be able to um, process all of your requests. Um, so DOB appointments, um, just a reminder that you can use the help form that we showed there to ask questions about DOB appointments. You, there's also on the actual login page for DOB appointments, there's a resources page and it gives you um, some common questions and a guide to how to use the system. The same goes for DOB Now Inspections. Um, there's lots of resources and user manuals, some that have been updated pretty recently as well, even though the system, you know, we've, we've had it for a while, we still are continuing to update that resources page and FAQs to make sure that the information you need is there as well. Um, and you can use the help form if you have questions about inspections, um, that's a place to go. Uh, E-filing, we did um, right in, I guess it was April, we did a, a big expansion of e-filing so that almost everything can be uh, submitted online in the e-filing system that had been dropped off at a borrow office. Um, all of the applications, permits, a lot of the payments. Um, so if that is news to you, I would definitely go here to the training presentation um, or the FAQs that we have there. You can also use the help form to ask any questions about e-filing related topics. And then the last thing I just wanted to give a plug for signing up for Buildings News. We've been using Buildings News um, very regularly, especially during these changing times um, to make sure that everybody understands and knows um, what we're doing and we've been sending them out and um, I definitely recommend that everybody sign up for this newsletter to make sure that you're getting the latest news from us. All right. Thanks everyone. Thanks Jody. Uh, we're now going to turn it over to Nancy Schindler and uh, she'll cover some of the items uh, in the world of local laws and uh, code updates that are affecting filings. So, Nancy, take take it away. Thank you, Mark. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, some local laws that we have uh, recently implemented or will be implementing in the very near future. Uh, I won't go into great detail, um, but as Mark mentioned, uh, all of them have some system uh, impacts. Um, and so I just wanted to summarize some of them and show you the ways that we're impl implementing them. Uh, local Law 33 of 2018, uh, which was amended by Local Law 95 of 2019. Uh, you'll hear much more about this, those of you who are attending the sust sustainability sessions. Uh, but uh, this local law provided that no later than October 31, 2020 and uh, October 31 of every year thereafter, uh, owners of buildings over 25,000 square feet uh, have to post a uh, building energy efficiency rating label. Um, and the label, um, and you can see a visual of it here, uh, has a letter grade and an energy efficiency score of the building. The letter grades will be assigned by DOB, but they are dictated by local laws 33 and 95 of 2019. Uh, so they're not arbitrary, they are actually specified in the law. Uh, and you can see if your building has to post this label uh, by checking on the New York City benchmarking covered building list. If it's on that list, then you have to post this label. Uh, and Mark is showing that list now, uh, which is um, part of Mayor's Office of Sustainability makes this available. And you can see it there on uh, Mayor's Office of Sustainability website. So if you don't know whether your building is required to post this, you can check that list. The building is on that list. And you have to post this near each public entrance to your building in a conspicuous location. Now I want to show you 
how are you going to be able to download that label uh, through DOB now, starting on October 1st? Um, owner and owner representatives, uh, will there will be a new tab in the DOB now public portal. It will be called the building energy efficiency rating tab. You can see it here, it's green. Again, that's starting on October 1st. Uh, you'll click on that tab. And you'll enter your uh, the, uh, BBL of your building or a block and lot. And you will see a list of bins. You choose the bin for your building, click the print icon. You will have to fill out some information about the owner, and the owner's representative. You'll have to uh, attest to uh, acknowledge your requirement, the owner's requirement to post. You can see that here. Once you fill that out and sign it, you will see what the label will look like. That'll give you a chance to review it, make sure it looks okay. You can see that it's got the letter grade, it's got the rating. In future years, it'll have ratings, the energy efficiency score for prior years. But since this is the first year, the requirement is in effect. You, you will only have see an energy efficiency score for uh, 2019. You can see also um, building specs, including the bin, the BBL. So you can see that is what your sign will look like, and then you can print out as many as you need to post them near each public entrance to your buildings. Local Law 97, um, this is a very important law. This is uh, an attempt to, uh, New York City is uh, going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from buildings. Um, and the first filing will be required in 2025. There is something in Local Law 97 of 2019 that allows certain buildings to apply for an adjustment to their limits. Uh, the limit that they would ordinarily be required to comply with, they can actually get a reduction of that limit by submitting an application for an adjustment. So buildings uh, where the 2018 greenhouse gas emissions exceed uh, Local Law 97's 2025 emission limits by 40% or more can apply for an adjustment. The applications will be submitted in DOB now starting in early 2021 and by law must be submitted by July 1st, 2021. If the application is granted, the building will receive an adjustment to its 2025 to 2029 emission limit of up to 70% of the building's 2018 actual reported greenhouse gas emissions. The application is denied. The applicant will be able to use the CCD1 process to appeal within DOB. And then if the CCD1 is denied, uh, as usual, you'll be able, the applicant will be able to apply to Board of Standards and Appeals or an Article 70 in court. So that's Local Law 97. Uh, Local Law 160 of 2017, uh, this is a law. You can see the uh, first bullet is basically what the law provides. The law actually states that DOB cannot issue a permit for a new building, demolition, or an alteration, a major alteration that will change the use or occupancy of the building, which is an alteration CO in DOB now. If the owner owes $25,000 or more in covered arrears to New York City, or $25,000 or more is owed to New York City with respect to the property itself. So even if it's not the, the owner doesn't owe money to New York City, if money is owed with respect to the property, uh, DOB has to deny the permit. Um, the law also provides that all applications must include an owner certification regarding arrears. So starting December 28, 2020, um, DOB now build will include uh, new owner statements on the PW1. These are the owner statements regarding arrears. 
And if either of these applies or both apply, uh, the permit will only be issued if the owner can attest that one of the exceptions in the law applies and the permit should be issued. And the exceptions include uh, that the work is to correct a violation, um, emergency work, and, and uh, a total of eight different exceptions. Local laws 106 and 116 of 2019. And again, those of you who attend the tenant protection sessions will hear more about these laws. Um, but uh, these uh, local law 106 provides uh, that a tenant protection plan must be submitted for the alteration, construction, or partial demolition of a building in which any dwelling unit will be occupied during construction. And this includes a newly constructed building that will be partially occupied while the work is ongoing. 106 also provides that the registered design professional who prepares the TPP must be retained by the contractor. That's a big change. Um, and the permit holder must sign a statement certifying that the TPP submitted by the RDP coordinates with the scope of work. So that the contractor, this ensures that the permit holder, the contractor, uh, is familiar with the TPP and that it coordinates with the scope of work. And the exceptions to the second and third bullet is work in an occupied one or two family home. In that case, the RDP does not have to be retained by the contractor. And uh, if the work is limited to a single dwelling unit um, and there's no disruption to the essential services of other units. And um, 116 provides that the permit will not be issued unless the tenant protection plan is approved by DOD. In order to implement 106 and 116 prior to uh, the changes in DOB now, we will be updating the TTP1 form uh, to include a statement by the RDP who prepares the TPP that uh, the RDP has been retained by the general contractor. Uh, and you see that it says if applicable, because as I explained earlier, there are uh, two exceptions to this requirement. And the TPP-1 form will also contain a professional certification by the RDP preparing the TPP. Uh, we will also be making updates to the PW-2. Uh, to conform to 106 of 2019. Uh, in particular, um, the permit holder on the PW2 will, attend, will certify that the plan coordinates with the scope of work intended and also an acknowledgement of the requirement that the RDP repairs the TPP must be retained by the general contract to perform the work. These laws, uh, 106 and 116, are already in effect. Um, and we have implemented some aspects of them. We will be implementing the remaining aspects uh, in the near future. In this, the, we will also be making some biz changes uh, in order to implement 106. Uh, and 116, we have not made these, these are coming in the near future. There will be a new required item called TPP-1 Tenant Protection Plan. The name of this required item reflects the name of the form, TPP-1. Uh, this, um, all filings after this is implemented in BIS will receive only the new required item, and the new required item is prior to permit rather than prior to approval. Applications filed before this change is implemented in BIS will continue to get the prior to approval tenant protection plan and notes required item. That's the current required item. And again, that's prior to approval. The TPP1 form will continue to be the form that is required to satisfy either of these required items. Local Law 114 of 2019 has been implemented in BIS. Um, so this is already this is already in biz. Uh, the law requires DOB to deny permits for occupied buildings for one year from the issuance of a violation for work without a permit. 
or for submitting a false statement about the occupancy of the building, specifically the two statements that you see uh, highlighted below on this slide. And again, um, the permit will only be issued if an exception applies and you conclude that the permit should be issued. Specifically, and you may have already seen this, when the violation is issued, work without a permit or false statement, the biz property post profile is flagged with an LL 114 permit restriction flag. It has an expiration date next to it. That expir expiration date is one year from the violation date. That expiration date will become NA after 365 days lapse, or if the violation is dismissed by oath before 365 days have passed, the uh, an NA will appear on that date. Again, to obtain a permit during this one year period, permit applicant must select an, the applicable exception on the local law 114 of 2019 request for exception to permit denial form, which right now can be accessed through the service notice for local law 114 of 2019, but will soon be available among our other forms on our website. So you have to uh, select the exception that applies and submit the completed, signed, notarized form to satisfy the required item. This is what the form looks like. You can see that it lists all of the exceptions. You have to check at least one exception in order to be issued a permit. And Local 0104 of 2019 is similar. We have not yet implemented this law in BIS or DOB now, but we will be doing so soon. This law requires DOB to compile a list of multiple dwellings with specific ratios of open HPD and DOB violations to number of dwellings. Uh, and the ratio is set out in the law. DOB is required to deny permits to buildings on this list unless an exception applies, same exceptions as we saw for 114 of 2019, and buildings will be removed from the list when violations are corrected and the ratio changes. So HPD and DOB are advising, encouraging um, any buildings that have outstanding violations to correct them uh, as soon as possible so that you don't uh, end up on this list of multiple dwellings that have permit restrictions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Um, we have been answering a number of questions that have been coming in through the chat. Uh, so actually, I think some people have also raised their hands. For this session, we're just going to be answering questions through the chat. Obviously, we won't be able to get to all of them, uh, but um, we'll take those that weren't answered and uh, research those and uh, put up some information afterwards. Um, but in the meantime, feel free to uh, continue submitting questions through the uh, through the chat function. Okay, so I'm gonna spend some time now talking about the next release that is coming up for uh, DOB now. So just very quickly, uh, let me recap what we have in there. Uh, so we already have over a dozen different work types in DOB now that we've been adding uh, incrementally. Uh, we've, we've learned as we've gone along, we've uh, been able to standardize the information and, and the process that we're collecting for various work types, uh, what are the goals that we are moving towards uh, and I've already implemented is trying to reduce the number of forms that have to be uh, uploaded and scanned. Uh, for example, TR1, uh, the TR forms are now data entry forms only. You don't have to sign them uh, manually. Those are already, those are part of the system. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that everything we've implemented so far is basically treated as an alt two. This is going to be uh, important in the next couple of slides as I explained the, the future release. But just again, something important to know that basically all the work types that have, we have in DOB now 
uh, are treated as alt twos. In addition to you know, these major releases, which have introduced new work types, uh, we have just in the past year made a, a counted up 110 uh, additions or changes to DOB now. Most of those based on feedback uh, from industry members um, to improve the system. Some of them are fairly significant, such as the ones that were highlighted in uh, those service notices that Jody mentioned earlier on in this presentation uh, around LAAs, structural filings, elevator filings. We did some major releases just this summer to improve those. And some of them have been the smaller changes behind, behind the scenes. So what's next? The, what we're calling the GC release, uh, although GC is just one uh, component of this, this big release that's coming up. Uh, in fact, it's so large, we're gonna split it into two phases. The first phase is gonna be on December 28th. Uh, and then the second phase will be approximately 30 days later. We're aiming for the end of January on that. So let me talk a little bit about what's going to be in each. So phase one, it's going to introduce uh, general construction plus four other work types, foundation, earthwork, supportive excavation, and protection and mechanical, uh, mechanical methods. So those are all going to be uh, treated, continue to be treated as alt uh, alt two filings. So if you have a simple GC job starting December twenty eighth, and it's a uh, what would have normally been an alt two job in DOB now, that's going to have to be filed in DOB now. Uh, sorry, if it was an alt two GC filing in Biz starting December twenty eighth going forward that's going to have to be filed in DOB now. Uh, any NB and ALT-1 filings in phase one, they will continue in DOB now. Additionally, any filings, and this is the same as we've done in past releases, any filings that are already in flight, and by that we mean if it's already reached D status uh, as of the go live date, will continue in, in BIS. So if you've started your GC filing, regardless if it's even if it's an alt tube and you've gotten to D status by December 28th, that will continue to live on in biz. The same for foundation, earthwork, support of excavation and uh, protection mechanical uh, methods filings. Uh, in addition, and I'm gonna get into each of these a little bit more in the following slides, uh, tenant protection plan functionality will be up, uh, added to DOB now in phase one, also withdrawal and supersede. Uh, Jody had mentioned this before. She went through this, this sort of the manual process that you have to do right now in terms of uploading the letter. Uh, but as Jody mentioned, come December 28th, we are going to build that into DOB now, uh, which will improve the, the turnaround time for those. Uh, in addition, the uh, portal, the front end is going to get uh, an improved, slightly improved look and, uh, and feel. Um, it shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't throw you off or anything like that, but uh, we're upgrading some of the software behind the scenes, and that's also going to uh, refresh the things on the, the front end. Now, uh, in addition, we're incorporating some additional feedback that we heard in many of our industry sessions that we had uh, at the end of last year, um, such as one of the things is the ability to export uh, all the jobs that are on your dashboard to export that to Excel. That's something that we heard and some other improvements are going to be made then. Phase two, that's when we're going to expand the GC filings to new buildings and what will in the future be called Alt-CO, Alteration CO jobs, which right now are called uh, Alt-1 jobs. So the Alt-1, Alt-2, Alt-3 terminologies, those are going to be going away. I'm going to go into that in a little bit more in a moment. Um, in addition, and this is going to be quite big, is certificate of occupancy. Uh, it's going to be quite different going forward. That's going to be rolled out in phase two as well. And I'm going to jump into that a little bit more. Again, uh, any jobs that were already in D status prior to that release will continue to live on. 
The one exception we're going to have is uh, affordable housing and fee exempt filings. Those are going to continue to live in this. So let me talk for a few minutes more about uh, general construction. And again, I'm just touching the uh, the surface here. Uh, we're going to have sessions, training sessions that are going to delve into this a lot more. I just want to uh, you know, give you a heads up uh, of what's coming down the pipeline. So GC, you know, right now it's, it's it falls under OT. It's going to be its own permit type going forward, and you will in uh, DOB now be able to combine file it with either a mechanical and or a structural filing if it's going to be the same contractor who's going to be doing the work. And in that case, uh, you'll actually get um, what we known as, a, I think, a CX, uh, a combination filing, a combination permit. And that's going to cover up to three different work types. Again, as I mentioned on the previous slide, in phase one, which is starting December 28th, uh, simply alteration filings, uh, GC alteration filings, which is what used to be called or what is today called all two and all three filings. So as well, those filings, GC filings, which don't affect the CFO, come December 28th, any new ones will have to be filed in DOB now. Starting in January or when we do phase two, that's going to expand to new buildings and alteration type ones. Uh, GC is going to play a bigger role uh, when it comes to, to phase two for NBs and alt ones, because that's going to be the driver for Schedule A, certificate of occupancies, and site safety plans. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, tenant protection plan uh, is going to be added to DOB now. And December 28th, um, Nancy had mentioned in her presentation how this is being added to biz. Uh, we won't be added to DOB now build until uh, December, though. Uh, but basically, this is going to mean some updated uh, owner statements on the PW1. And basically, there's going to be logic to see if there's occupied dwelling units, then uh, it's going to the system is automatically going to require a TPP. The TPP will fill, be filled out in DOB now. There's no more TPP one form, uh, and there's going to be again additional training just on TPP as we get closer to the December launch. Now I wanted to touch a little bit more on the the job type structure. So again, in my previous slide, I mentioned that the December 28th release is just going to be alterations. Uh, then about 30 days later, when we do in, the, in January, we're going to add in phase two the job type structure. So again, uh, and sorry for being repetitive, but right now all the work types that are in DOB now and also in phase one of the GC release are just those that are going to be alteration jobs that lead to a, an LOC, that they don't impact the CFO. So that is the, the job type. That's the, the, the top level. Once uh, we have phase two, the top level is going to be new buildings, trains. We've actually already launched trains. That's its own separate job type, kind of standalone. And then alteration. We're going to have two sub job types, either those that impact the CFO. So those are going to be our alt CO job types. And again, that's going to be uh, introduced in January. And then our alteration job types that uh, don't affect the CFO, but just lead to a letter of completion. Uh, those are what are today an alt two or an alt three. Those are the existing work types plus GC come, come December. Looking here at the lower portion of the screen, below the job type, we have multiple filings. So this is kind of similar to in the biz world, where you have your doc one, your doc two, your doc three, and, and so on. Um, we already have that functionality to uh, a basic extent, kind of rudimentary in DOB now already. We are going to be expanding that out 
where as we get down the road uh, in the phase two release, where, for example, especially when you have an NB and RCO, where you start off on your GC filing, a lot of the information that gets entered on that GC filing will no longer have to be repeated on the other work types. Uh, this is one of the things that we've heard, for example, is, you know, the architectural, the GC was filed. Why are these questions being repeated on the structural filing? Or going forward, they're not going to be. The information is going to be grabbed from the, the GC filing. Like I mentioned before in my previous slide here, the GC going forward will be uh, the work type that triggers the Schedule A, the Certificate of Occupancy, the Site Safety Plan. That's going to happen because the GC filing will have to be the initial on a, an NB or an RCO job. Again, I realize this is a lot to take in. Just touching this at sort of a high level, want to give you, uh, you know, an idea that this job type structure is going to be rolled out in DOB now. You know, slightly similar, but at the same time different from what we have in the biz world right now. So ex uh, expect uh, some things to be the same, but also expect that some things are being uh, improved upon. Now, the other big thing I mentioned is, and this is going to be in phase two, is that the certificate of occupancy process is going to is going to change. Starting in phase two, which right now is tentatively going to be at the end of January, all certificate of occupancy processing, and this is going to be including for jobs that are already in fight in biz, is going to take place in DOB now. The Schedule A and the CO will be at the bin level. So we're going to actually have sort of a, a living document that's going to go across jobs uh, for a particular building, a, a living CFO uh, that will get added to as the building progresses. Um, well, if it's a new building, if it's an existing building, the first job that affects the CRO after we go live is going to complete a Schedule A and then a CFO for the entire building. And then as other jobs affect the, uh, affect the building, they will get added to. We're going to have different types of uh, CFOs. Some of these are new terms. Some of these are existing terms. Um, I'm not going to go into them in detail, but they will explain how, for example, on a new building, the CFO will progress over time. Just a couple of, of points on the, you know, the old process, comparing it to the future process. Again, like I mentioned, each building will only have one active uh, certificate of occupancy. Right now, it's kind of hard. You go into biz and you try to find the most recent CFO. It's not that easy. Multiple jobs have different schedule schedule A's. This is going to tie everything together again into sort of one living document for, for the building. Um, again, I'm not going to go into all the details here, but just to give you a taste of you know, some of the reasoning why we're moving towards towards the system. And you know, an ability for members of the industry to see the progress uh, that we're making in in the area of certificate of occupancy issuance. As I mentioned before, uh, when we launch phase two, which will include certificate of occupancy, again aiming for the end of January, this is going to impact all jobs that lead to a, a certificate of occupancy. So all Alt-1 jobs and all NB jobs, even those that have been living in, uh, in biz. So when we have DOB Now jobs, uh, if you have a DOB Now NB or an Alt-CO job, of course, if you start in January, you know, you're not going to get to the CFO portion until months, if not a year down the road as the building uh, progresses, but we already have 
many jobs that are in process right now in the biz world that will be getting their CFO, uh, the interim CFO, temporary CFO early next year. So what's going to be done, and again, we're going to go in more detail in our training classes, but all CFO requests starting in late January, even for biz jobs, will have to be entered into DOB now. So there is going to be some rekeying of information, but basically the information that was on the biz schedule of A, schedule A will need to be input into DOB now build. Um, you can start filling out the schedule occupancy in, in build as early as uh, the system goes live, even if you're not ready to request occupancy. Then there's going to be sort of a life cycle where the, uh, again, the occupancy, like it is today, uh, the inspections can be done, requested in DOB now inspections. Uh, the applicant is going to request occupancy, specifying the type of occupancy they want, and this is going to be done at the floor or, or use combination. So again, it could be one portion of, of the building. And then the C of O is going to be issued based on the new occupancy data for the entire bin. And as I mentioned before a couple of times, later there'll be ongoing updates to that schedule of occupancy and that certificate of occupancy as future jobs uh, get filed and come to completion. I mentioned that there are going to be, uh, there's going to be training, going uh, detailed training on these items. Again, this is really just sort of, you know, touching the tip of the iceberg here. Um, as we have done in the past, there will be service notices those will serve as the official announcement of the upcoming change, confirm the date. Uh, there'll be links in there to sign up for training. Um, in the past, we've done a mix of in-person training and online training. You know, probably, this will probably be all online training. You know, it all depends on what's happening. Uh, but we will have training both before we go live uh, in the month of December, January, and then even after we go live, we'll have continuous uh, classes. The classes are going to be broken down into different topics. So we'll have a class on certificate of occupancy. We'll have a class on uh, general construction filing. We're, we're, our first classes will be focused on general construction filings that don't affect uh, an alteration CO uh, or, or standalone that aren't part of a new building. Then as we progress, we'll have classes that will cover the, you know, those more complicated topics, such as a new building. Uh, we will, as uh, Jody printed out in her earlier presentation, you know, we'll be updating the resources that we have online. We'll have multiple guides and videos uh, on our website. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, again, this is sort of just uh, the tip of the iceberg. Wanted to provide some background information. To, uh, to our industry members. Many of you have, you know, this is not actually new to you because we've had over the past, uh, oh, year and a half, two years, we've been collecting feedback on the, on the certificate of occupancy process with various uh, industry members. Uh, some of the changes that you'll also see in, as I mentioned before, in the DOB Now system are based on feedback that we've heard in the various, uh, industry sessions that we had last year. So we're continuing to make improvements. We're pretty uh, excited about this release. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be probably our biggest release in the DOB Now build world. Uh, general construction is the biggest filing type that, that we have, the biggest work type. It's going to become its own uh, permit type going forward. And uh, with that, we've been taking a bunch of questions. Uh, Sean has been uh, turning out answers to, to many of them. I uh, haven't been able to answer all of them, but we're going to take a break here for, uh, for a couple of seconds, and I'm going to touch base with uh, Sean and see what we can uh, perhaps read out some answers um, online. So everybody bear with me for a couple of seconds.
Okay. Um, a couple of people have asked, uh, will this presentation be available uh, online? Yes, I believe all these presentations are going to be available on the, uh, the conference website. I don't know exactly where, but yes, they will be uh, saved as, as PDFs and they will be available for access to, to all participants. I believe that's true for not just this session, but for all the sessions this, this week. Um, I see a question here. Let's see. Um, There's a question here on uh, on superseding. So withdrawal and superseding, uh, I believe, for the applicants and for the contractors are going to be rolled out in uh, in December. So hopefully that will cut down on the on the turnaround time there. Um, let's see. Here's a question: Does uh, an S one Filing for additional scope under DOB now filing require an additional permit to the I-1 filing. This is a question asked by uh, by Lisa. Uh, so, an S-1 filing can either be for an additional work type, or yeah, if you've expanded the scope such as to a different floor, um, then it could be for the same work type. And yes, each subsequent uh, filing in DOB now will require its own permit. Because, for example, if you've done an initial and that's only going to be for floors, let's say 18 and 19, then later the uh, applicant hires you and you wants to do the 20th floor, that's going to be a subsequent filing that would need its own permit for that, for that floor. Uh, question on the combined fine, the GCCX uh, permit. If it's a different uh, RA or, or PE who prepared the plans, then is that going to be uh, separate? So yeah, in that particular case, uh, I believe those are going to be separate filings. So that would not lead to a, a combined permit. Again, I need to double check that, but that's my understanding right now. Uh, question on curb cut filings. Uh, right now, you, each individual curb cut is a separate filing, um, and then you file a subsequent for the for the next one. For the immediate future, that's the way it's going to be. Um, we will be updating the system, so you don't need to wait for the first curb cut to be uh, approved. Um, but we will be looking and revisiting the curb cut uh, filings some point, probably maybe, you know, towards the latter part of, of next year, uh, we'll be going back and revisiting those. Uh, eventually, we'll be adding uh, BPPs to DOB now. So probably when that comes online, we'll also look at curb cuts as well, because both of them are sort of uh, related. And flipping through some more of, of the questions here. Question on legalization. Uh, so, when you start off, uh, and actually you have this now, and it's going to be expanded further. But when you start off a new filing, one of the things, questions that come up right up front is: Is this filing for legalization or for new work? So that question is going to continue to be there right up front. If it's for legalization, you'll choose that. And that will go down its own uh, somewhat unique path. Are there plans to add work on floors to the DOB Now dashboard? Uh, that is something we have in the pipeline, hoping to, yes, hoping to get that in there for December. Uh, can't guarantee it at this moment, but it's uh, 
it's definitely top of the top of the wish list. Uh, so, a question on the uh, if we have two alt ones in the same building. Uh, now you have to sort of sim submit it simultaneously, so it can be combined into one CFO. How is that going to happen in in the future? So in the future, uh, the system. I'm not going to get into all, all all the details here, but yes, the system is going to be able to account for multiple alteration uh, CO jobs happening in, in the in the same building. Uh, it's going to be able to account for, hey, perhaps. You know, the job on the sixth floor was filed first, then the job on the seventh floor, but the job on the seventh floor actually gets completed first. It's going to be able to account for that and be able to combine uh, different schedules, schedule A's coming from different jobs. It's going to be able to, to account for that. Again, we could go into, into that in uh, quite some depth. Uh, not going to get into that now for the sake of time. But yes, the system is going to be able to uh, to account for that. Um, you know, a question on uh, DOB now is centralizing DOB activities. What will the role of DOB borough offices be when all phases are, are instituted? So that is a uh, continues to be a work in, in progress. Uh, you know, we are going. We are continuing to to optimize. How reviews are being conducted here for for standard plan jobs. Some work types will continue to be done in, in specialized groups. You know, for example, curb cuts, uh, fences, elevators. You know, those will continue to be done in by specialized groups, regardless of, of the building. Some other fine types, uh, perhaps you know, residential part, residential buildings. Are going to be done. One and two families are all going to be done by one particular unit. Um, commercial high rises will be done in another unit, and then some jobs will be done at at the borough. Uh, so, like I said, we're continuously optimizing and looking towards the future uh, to figure out the best way that we can provide the best expertise in terms of reviewing jobs and do it in the most efficient manner. Um, we are moving somewhat away from the borough concept, but not completely. And this is going to be very much uh, a work in progress uh, over the, this year, the next year, and even the years uh, beyond that. Uh, can you file a PAA for a legalization job? No, you, can, you cannot uh, do that. Uh, you know, one of the whole purposes idea is with a legalization job is that you know the work has already been completed, thus there should be no uh, no PAA there. Um, some questions about the the TPPs. Uh, honestly, I don't have all the details there. Uh, but I have to. Get back and get some answers on on that. Um, any plan to improve the turnaround time uh, on DOB now? Help? Yes, we're continuously. I, I know this may seem may seem frustrating, but we are uh, continuously monitoring our, our turnaround time. We're bringing in more and more people to to answer those questions, um, and that's you know also part of the reason why we're splitting up this release into two phases. Uh, so we can get everybody familiar with the first phase, uh, be able to answer questions that come in in regards to that, and then we'll expand to the to the second phase. Uh, question on buildings that already have a final CO. Um, what's the system going to be going forward? So if the building already has a final CO, but then in the future there's an alteration job. That's going to modify that CO. That final CO that was issued today, last year, whatever. That's going to be 
have to be rekeyed into DOB now build, and then of course updated for those parts of the building that are being changed. Uh, so yes, there will be some perhaps additional work. Uh, although really, it's not that much more work. Uh, but that whole CO is going to be need to be entered by that first applicant who's modifying it into DOB now build. Uh, but then going forward, all that information is going to be there. So the next person who comes along and has a job that's uh, updating the CFO, you're going to be able to pull up the CFO as it is right now with anything that's in process, uh, already flagged, figure out which portions of the building you are modifying or impacting, uh, and then just touch those. So the, the C, uh, Schedule A and the CFO are going to get pretty uh, integrated. Um, again, as I said, it's going to be sort of a, a living document that people are going to go in and be able to update just shortened parts. But the advantage is that anybody's going to be able to go in and see not just the status of their particular request on the CFO that might be just one floor, but see what others are doing in the same building and see where they are uh, on the CFO as, as well. Uh, question on will DOB now incorporate this information at some point? You know, we are getting there. More and more information is getting pulled in from, from biz. Uh, we don't have a date yet to, to turn off biz. Uh, we realize there are, you know, a large number of filings that are, are still in process in biz. Those are going to, for the most part, continue to live out in biz. At some point, biz will be turned off. Uh, the data that's there will not go away, obviously. Uh, it'll be retained for historical purposes. Uh, but we don't have a date for that yet. Uh, we have multiple work types that we need to release get live in DOB now first before we uh, can really come up with a date in terms of turning off this. So yes, it's in the future, but no, no fixed date yet at all for that. Um, so I'm trying to look at some of the uh, other items that are coming through the, the scroll right now. Um, Let me ask when you uh, have a when you've modified an existing CFO on the first floor of a mixed use building. Now they make us do an inspection for the entire building, uh, but we're only doing CFO at the retail level. Will we need to inspect the entire building or only the change? So I believe one of the advantages of this uh, new process is that you will be able to request inspections, CFO inspections just on a particular area. So again, this should make the area, make the process more efficient go going forward. Uh, question, if a building has a final C CRO from 10 years ago and there's no future desire to change it, then that 10 year old CRO will remain in biz. Correct, yes. But if in a year from now, you are going to be doing a job that is going to affect that uh, affect the CFO, then that new process will take place. Um, if you're doing simply an alteration job, no impact on the CFO, then the existing uh, biz CFO is fine. It's only when you have a, you know an alt one or alteration CO job that you'll need to go through the, the new process. And that is going to, the new CFO process is going to get fed by both any biz jobs that were created in the past that haven't been completed, as well as future uh, DOB Now jobs. So the whole idea is that if you're finding in the future a job in DOB Now that affects the CFO, it's going to capture information up front, Schedule A information, but that's all going to become integrated with the schedule, uh, so the, the certificate, certificate of occupancy, and will be integrated early on so that when you get to 
time to uh, request your CFO for your particular area in that building, uh, it's going to pull in existing information, information from other jobs, and try to make the whole process more seamless. Uh, in phase two, will two alteration COs be permitted to be filed by different applicants? Uh, so, yes, you know, if you have an alteration CO on, on one floor by one applicant and another alteration CO even on the same floor, perhaps, but on a, in a different area, uh, that, could, that can be done uh, as well. If you have a large building. So you know, somebody's doing perhaps uh, one storefront on the ground floor and another applicant is doing another storefront uh, also on the ground floor. Sure, you will be able to have uh, two different applicants working on it because the CFO is not only going to be broken down by floor level, but it's also on each floor. You may have multiple uses uh, depending on the, on the type of building. Again, you may have a restaurant on one part of the ground floor, another part may be a, a gym, for example. Uh, both alteration jobs happening by different uh, applicants of records. The system will be able to, to account for that. Um, Um, somebody had a suggestion there about the emails that the system generates. I'm just jotting that down. Talk to our developers to see if they can incorporate that. Uh, can a column be added to the public portal uh, that indicates a job type? Yes, we're looking at doing that uh, and also in the industry portal uh, as well. But the questions seem to be uh, slowing down. And yes, yeah, some of these questions I know we haven't answered. Uh, I honestly don't know the answers uh, to some of these off, uh, off the cuff. And rather than giving uh, misinformation, I, I want to be able to uh, defer these to, to some of our experts. Um, some of these are also suggestions that we're getting in and that we will try to incorporate these in, uh, in, in the future. Um, yes, a question on site safety plans. Will those be incorporated in phase two? That is correct, yes. So site safety will be part of a uh, phase two as well. I'm gonna actually go back here and pull that slide up. Uh, Oh, I thought it was here on in phase two, but yes, phase, site safety will be included in, in phase two. In addition, um, something I didn't mention, but in the area of new buildings, uh, the whole, there's gonna be a new T-bin process that's going to be uh, automated. So right now, uh, applicants often find issues because they get ready to file on a, for a new building and there's no, there's no new bin yet. And what happens is they start filing the new building plans on the existing bin. And then at some point, city planning provides a new bin, a, a T bin, and then we have to get jobs shifted over. We're gonna try to be addressing that uh, in DOB now when we launch new buildings. So as part of the new buildings process, uh, there's gonna be an integrated T bin process, try to cut down on a lot of the been issues that come up that often require applicants to go to the uh, to the biz unit. Uh, we're going to try and uh, speed that up, make that more integrated uh, going going forward. Um, see, 
other, other questions that are coming in. Uh, so we asked, will there be a different filing process for design build jobs? Um, I, I've heard of the term design build. Uh, honestly, I don't know how that would affect uh, you'll be now build. Um, I'm going to take that back to some of our folks here and ask them about that. So we're actually coming up on the uh, on the end of our, a lot of time. We have a few more minutes left. Uh, again, thank you for all of you who, who have attended. Uh, like I said, this presentation is going to be posted uh, on the website. Um, Question, fire protection plans no longer have to be filed at DOB, only at FDNY, that is correct. Yeah, I think that change was made last summer. Uh, fire protection plans, fire suppression, and I think fire alarm now are uh, filed directly with the fire department. If you have any other questions, feel free to, to throw them in, in the chat there. Uh, Sharon, thank you for your thank you, but it's actually not just me, uh, I have other members of, of our team there. Don is actually the one at the, uh, at the keyboard there. <laughs> uh, will we be able to add to file a job without having all items required to be uploaded. So there are some jobs, some items that can be deferred, uh, a limited set. Uh, already today, uh, there's an option in uh, on the documents tab. You scroll over to the right, you can request a waiver or request a deferral. Uh, but that is sort of uh, limited depending on the on the document type. Uh, we are moving with DOB now build to really get full filings uh, as opposed to trying to cut down on, on some of the, the back and forth that folks may be used to now. Um, so some documents, yes, can be deferred to a later stage to, to permit, but for the most part, uh, filings need to be complete, for lack of a better word, uh, before submission. But again, you know, we are, are looking again to streamline the process uh, and we will tweak it as we get feedback from, from industry members. Uh, there's a question there about uh, landmarks approval. Uh, I don't know the answer offhand. So uh, instead of providing incorrect information, uh, we're going to have to take that back. Again, uh, some of these questions we're going to look at, and then we're going to be updating our FAQs as well. You know, those FAQs that uh, Jody highlighted in her portion of the uh, presentation, we're going to look to update those if necessary. Will affordable housing jobs be able to utilize the DOB now system? So for now, um, the NB uh, portion of, uh, of an affordable housing job is going to continue to be done in this for the uh, foreseeable future, uh, in part because we don't have a fee deferred logic in DOB now built. We either have um, be exempt or pay your, you know, or pay your fees. Uh, we, we don't have fee deferred. Uh, so th that's going to be one of the reasons why affordable housing uh, and fee deferred jobs are going to remain, NBs are going to remain in this for the uh, foreseeable future. Um, 
but uh, if you do have the upcoming job that's tied in with an affordable housing, then the non-architectural uh, aspects are going to be done in DOB Now Build. And actually, that's already the process now. Uh, I do want to talk about fees. Um, when we do get to the portion of NBs and, and LTOs or the big jobs, we are going to have in DOB Now fee logic where, like in biz, you can pay uh, the minimum amount or the 50%. The that is also going to be in, uh, in DOB Now build. Uh, I believe that's going to kick in January uh, when we launch NBs and RCOs. So right now, uh, all jobs that are treated as, so that's all the existing work types, plus GC in phase one, any job that's purely an alteration, again, using old terminology in Alt 2 and Alt 3, uh, those are either fee exempt or you pay all your filing fees up front. But for the bigger jobs, NBs and RCOs, when those get launched in DOB now, there will be the option for paying 50% uh, or whatever the uh, minimum is going forward. And that's going to basically mimic what's available for biz and bees uh, and RCO jobs as well. Uh, any fee deferred jobs again, or affordable housing jobs, those will be done in biz for the foreseeable future, even past general. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all for, uh, for joining us today. Uh, Many of you have probably jo uh, joined uh, other presentations today. Thank you on uh, behalf of uh, all of us at DOB. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on future presentations that are going on through, uh, through the rest of the week. Um, I think sign up is still available for those. And uh, with that, I wish you all a good night. Uh, stay safe. Bye-bye.